Today I wanted to talk about problems with tired light redshift models. Now I mentioned in the past that the redshift model for the expanding universe fails because galaxies and galactic clusters aren't expanding so it's a highly density dependent model and it doesn't work for other reasons as well because expansion doesn't work. But if you're looking for alternatives you can get into a lot of trouble looking at tired light models because most of them just don't work. And that's a general problem. The standard model may fail, but the alternatives are worse. And when I was doing research for this, I found a list that was put together by Louis Marmet of over 80 tired redshift models. So I decided doing a survey of 80 models and taking hours and hours wasn't the best way to do this. So I'll put the link for his list in the description if you want to look through it. Um, and I'm just going to talk about the general categories and the general problems with them. But first, when you're ever you're reading a paper on a tire redshift theory or something about it, there are a few things to keep in mind. So I have like a little checklist. Uh, the first thing I look for is fictitious interactions, things that we've never heard of actually occurring in real physics. Um, fictitious energy loss mechanisms. Uh, we also have either no or fictitious energy transfer mechanisms. When If photons lose energy, the energy has to go someplace. Uh, one of the most common problems with these models is blurring of light um, and that's typically from Compton scatter. The Compton scattering of light by anything, any form of matter will cause light to blur. So you have to come up with an alternative to Compton scatter. While it's also being scattered in all directions. Um, and in general, Compton scattering doesn't scatter forward in the same direction, losing exactly the right amount of light. And the scattering also causes a loss in intensity, a loss in brightness. So if there was a lot of scattering, we wouldn't even see the high redshift galaxies at all. And so this also creates an energy dependence because you would have more scattering in areas where there's galaxies or galactic clusters and less scattering in voids or or even redshift in general less redshift in voids more in in galaxies and galactic cluster regions so the density dependence is a big problem and not just with the expanding universe model the absorption may also be too nonlinear. it may happen too quickly and we wouldn't see the distant galaxies and we wouldn't see a linear effect because the current observations with JWST show that if we look at the size of galaxies it follows a fairly linear effect. So even if it's slightly nonlinear model it still needs to be fairly linear. And there are a lot more problems especially when you get into the details but I'll just use those as the basics. Um, and with that background, I can go into the types of models. The first big group is photon decay, where photons spontaneously lose energy as they go. And first of all, this isn't known to happen in experiments on Earth, and there isn't a good mechanism for that. And in fact, the standard model generally requires that photons don't lose energy. So it's inconsistent with our experiences and observations and general physics. As well as if photons are decaying and losing energy, that energy has to go someplace. So you have to have a model for the energy going someplace. Which actually puts it into one of the other models. It's totally different. So there's usually something missing from photon decay models. The next big group is photon ether interactions where ether or the quantum field is causing photons to lose energy. And Walter Ernst was one of the first to propose this and he had an early 
idea of a quantum field theory research based on Planck oscillator. So it's more quantum field than ether, although it gets categorized as just an ether. But again, we are not, there's no evidence, especially like the Michelson-Morley experiment, that there's ether drag. So you don't have energy loss due to drag. And we don't have a mechanism where photons lose energy to ether. If you use an ether model for a photon medium, then generally you don't want any energy loss in your model for it to fit. And so most of the ether models require an additional mechanism to handle the energy loss. So there's usually shortcomings in these models and fictitious physics always occur in these ether models. You would have to have a much better model of photons that's consistent with ether medium to come up with some sort of mechanism whereby the energy of the photons goes into the ether directly. And that's another thing. Usually when we talk about conservation of energy, we don't allow for energy to flow in and out of the ether. And while that may be possible, I mentioned possibly in weak interactions, then, but in general, we, we just don't go that way. So they're problematic. The next big group is photon-photon interactions. We do know that photons of high energy can lose energy in a sea of other photons. But we also know that two photon beams can cross each other without interacting at all. And generally they don't interact. So unless you are across the threshold for the pair production energy for electron-positron pairs, you don't see a great deal of interaction between photons. And again, you have to come up with the mechanism for where does the energy go? Do these photons become excited? Do you produce new photons? And so again, these models tend to not work out without creating entirely new physics that's unknown to us. Now the group of interactions that does actually occur to some degree are photon-electron interactions because photons interact with electrons all the time. The problem is you do have things like electron excitation in atoms, which I'll get to in a minute, but you have things that are basic like Thompson scattering, Thompson scattering, which is elastic, so it doesn't lose energy. So these scattering effects like Compton scatter, scattering happen. And that's the biggest flaw with the electron models is even if you have a less frequent interaction that might cause redshift, it might be fictitious, but some of the interactions that are in these theories actually occur and may actually cause redshift to a degree but you still have Compton scattering. So you still have loss of light intensity, potentially blurring of images, high density dependence because you're gonna get more scattering in galaxies and galactic clusters. So in general, the photon electron models fail for one of these reasons, if not all of them. And then you have photon interactions with more complicated forms of matter like atoms, particularly hydrogen. Then you can have gases and plasma, and you can have dust. And then there's quantum mechanical interactions. And quantum mechanical versions are generally, we, we have a piece of math we're using to show photons lose energy, but we don't know what the real interaction is, so we just call it quantum mechanical. But that aside, any interaction with matter, one of these more complicated forms, usually starts with electron interactions, photons interacting with electrons. So they're Compton scattering, they're Thompson scattering, and they're going to be density dependent. So all the basic problems are there that you have with the photon electron model. And so basically they all fail for all the same types of reasons, even though they're even more possible mechanisms for redshift, 
they still are going to be overwhelmed by the basic Thompson scattering and Thompson scattering and other particular scattering that occurs. So the other big group going a slightly different direction is gravitational redshift. And this is one of the oldest proposed ideas by Fritz Wicke. And some of these ideas require that photons have mass, so they interact with matter with mass, and they cause matter with mass to change momenta. But we don't know that photons have mass. And then there's general relativistic models where they say space is curving and photons are going to lose energy when space curves. Except that's not the way general relativity works. If, if a photon is following curved space, it's not supposed to lose any energy at all. There's not supposed to be an interaction there. And so there are other versions, but you end up with all the same types of problems, fictitious interactions in particular. And so all the gravitational models don't work. The next group to consider is what I call quantum general relativity redshifts. And that's because under normal general relativity, it can be combined with gravity, but with quantum general relativity, it's not. Because in quantum general relativity, you're not going to have a space-time curvature effect that accounts for gravity. So you can look, look at things a little different. But the key here is that photons are interacting with all the matter in the universe. And if you look at quantum general relativity in a classic sense, if there is an interaction with matter causing photons to move, then photons are causing matter to move. So in the classical sense, when there's an action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. In this case, photons causing matter to move in some way, which requires energy, which means the photons lose energy. And I think that there's some possibility here, so I'm going to do a completely different video where I talk about that more. And the last big group I want to talk about is the laws of physics change so that photons lose energy over time and distance. And as I've said in other videos, the if you look at the way that the physical constants are interrelated, there's only very limited ways they can change, mostly to account for general relativistic effects. So changing the physical constants generally is a non-starter in any model of physics that works. So these generally fail. And then beyond this, there are lots of models, some of which are going to be crackpot theories and shouldn't be taken seriously at all. So, as I said, when you go through a list of the probably 100 plus different models for tire light redshift that have been proposed, most of them are going to be garbage. And it should be pretty obvious if you use this checklist and some of the other ideas I presented that they are garbage. And so the key is how do we find the right one? And as I said, I'll talk about the idea that I like in my next video. So I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. I have some books for sale if you're interested in my quantum field theory research and my particle theory research. And as always, I want to thank my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. You help out a big deal in my life, and thanks for watching.